Sometimes to wrangle a big module and learn how it works takes an entire video by itself. Other times the modules are smaller but still useful out here on the range. Today we're taking a look at a bunch of modules like that that are particularly helpful for the dungeon masters out there. So pull on your boots and throw on your hat for this module roundup. Yeehaw! But really, we're going to cover some awesome modules today that are small but can do a lot to help you out as a DM. Here's what you'll know how to do by the end of this video. Set a GM map image that your players can't see so you can have secrets marked in the map itself with the GM scene background module. Keep your roles actually private from your players by stopping the chat message from appearing to them at all with the actually private roles module. Show journal entries to only specific players with the FVTT selective show module. And, uh, add secret information to actors, items, and journal entries that your players can't see with the GM notes module. Add drag and drop support for tokens, tiles, audio, and journal entries with the drag upload module. And lastly, two modules that offer the ability to easily search your entire world for characters, items, spells, and quickly interact with them with the search anywhere and quick insert modules. That's a big list, and if you don't care about some of it, though it's all great, you can skip to the sections you do care about using the chapter selection down below. There's also going to be a chapter on this super cool shirt that I'm wearing at the end, so stick around. Uh, no more time wasting. We're starting with GM Scene Background, which is probably the smallest module made by Evan, also known as Irrational from Death Saves Development, who also created the Combat Utility Belt, Maestro, and a bunch more, which will be getting their own videos before too long, and if you want to support their development, be sure to check out their Patreon. But, back on topic. Once you've installed and activated GM Scene Background, it's as easy as going to the Scene Configuration menu and setting an image in the new GM Background Image field. If you don't set one, it will be uh, it will just default to the normal background image, so there's no extra work if you don't have a special background image. One module down, and six more to go. Now we're taking a look at actually private roles from the developer Felix, who also makes the better NPC sheet 5e and GM notes modules, and you'll find a link to support them down below. Once you've got the module installed and activated, all you have to do is change over to private GM role in the dropdown or use the slash GM role rolling syntax, hit enter, and you'll see that the chat card appears for you, but not for your players. Now go forth and leave your party utterly shocked as to how that ooze got so close to them without alerting any of them, without alerting them to any of its stealth rolls. Let's stay on this track of controlling what your players can and can't see with the FVTT Selective Show module from friend of the channel, Moo Man, who also made the awesome Dungeon Draft Importer module that I covered recently. Once you've got the module installed and activated, head over to your Journal tab, open the entry you want to share, and hit the Show Player button. You'll get a list of players to choose from, and you can multi-select by holding Shift and clicking if they're all next to each other, or Control and clicking if they're not. Then just hit Show, and your selected players will see it. Easy peasy. Now that we're looking at journal entries, let's add some new functionality to them with the GM Notes module, which also comes from Felix, whom you may remember from 45 seconds ago. Once you've got the module installed and activated, you'll be able to add secret GM notes to actors, items, roll tables, and journal entries. It's as simple as opening any of those sheets and finding the GM Notes button in the top of the window. From there, you can click the Edit button and write just like a normal journal entry. On top of that, you can also quickly move your note to or from an actor's bio, an item's description, or a journal entry's content. Then, once you've got all of your players on the right scene, sometimes you might want to add a tile, a token, or something else, but you hadn't already set it up in Foundry. That's where our next module, Drag Upload, comes in. It was commissioned by Anathema, who is the project coordinator for Foundry VTT, and developed and maintained by Cody, also known as C.S. Wendrowski on Discord, who also made the tabbed chat log module, but that is a story for another day. Be sure to check their Patreon out as well, especially if you want to use Foundry to do visual novels, because they've got a module in the works that's going to make that a lot better for you. Uh, once you've installed an activated drag upload, you can drag and drop images as tokens, tiles, and journal pins, and sound files as ambient, ambient audio. The one hitch is that it won't work if you run Foundry and Admin mode on Windows due to a Windows security feature. If you run it normally, you should be all good though. Now, let's go over how to use drag upload. If you want the image you drag in to be a token, then just click on any of the token tools on the left-hand side of Foundry, and drag upload will ask you if you want it to be a character, NPC, vehicle, or actorless token, and generate all the correct things for you. 
If you just want it to be a tile, all you have to do is change to the tile tools and you're in business. The tile will be placed on the map at its full resolution where you can quickly resize it. If you use a browser other than Firefox, you can even drag an image directly from your browser into Foundry and it will import it the same way. If you change to the journal tools and drag and drop an image, it will automatically create a journal entry, add the image to it, and place a pen to the journal entry on the map where you placed it. And before you try it, this doesn't work with text files to populate journal entries, just images. Sound files work the same way. A quick drag and drop puts an ambient sound source on the map where you placed it, which you can then click into and change the audible radius and all that other good stuff. All of the files that we're dragging and dropping get placed in a drag upload folder that is split into tokens, tiles, journals, and ambient folders. It's also smart enough to see if the file is already in the folder your current drag and drop action would place it in, and if it is, it won't make a duplicate of it. The last two modules we're going to look at as a pairing, because they do similar things, but with a few notable differences. The modules are Search Anywhere from friend of the channel Simone, who also makes the excellent 3D dice rolling module, Dice So Nice, which I covered a bit ago, and Babel for translating compendium packs, and the other module is Quick Insert, which comes to us from the developer Sunspots, who also makes the One Journal module. Both of these modules let you quickly search your entire world for actors, items, scenes, journal entries, and compendia with a keyboard shortcut like control space, which you can control easily in the settings, along with disabling search for your players, and they both give you a list of the results that you can scroll through and see where the result is coming from and open the result. There are some differences between them though, uh, so let's take a look at their unique features and how they dealt with similar challenges, starting with Search Anywhere. Search Anywhere lets you filter results with customizable keyboard shortcuts like Control T to search just through actors, or Control R for roll tables, which it supports in search results, but Quick Insert doesn't. Uh, once you've selected a result, you'll get a command window to choose what to do. You can open the result or copy a reference to it, which lets you make nice links in journal entries, or you can send a reference chat, which just places the reference in the chat window. For roll tables, there will be an option to roll. For macros, there's an option to execute. For scenes, there's an option to activate, configure, or open the related journal entry. And compendium entities will have an option to directly import into the world. You can set the command window to only appear when you press shift in the settings as well, and it will default to open. When you open a character sheet, you'll also see in the bottom left-hand corner a small icon, which you can drag and drop onto the map to quickly add a token. Beyond just searching, one of the best things about Search Anywhere is that you can also run any chat commands in the search window, which is great whenever you're on a different tab or don't want to constantly have to click back into the chat window. All you have to do is type slash followed by your command like slash roll 1d20. Now let's swap over to Quick Insert and see how it works. There's filter options in Quick Insert as well. Just start uh, your search with the at sign and you'll get a, a list of possible filters. On top of the existing filters, you can create your own by going to the module settings and hitting edit filters. From there, you can enable or disable any filter, edit existing filters, or duplicate one as a base to make a new filter. When you're setting up a filter, you can limit it to certain compendia, entity types, and directories within the world. There's even a search box where you can test out your filter's current settings and see if everything is available as you'd expect. Once you've found the result that you want to use, you can click on it to open its character sheet if it's an actor, the scene configuration menu if it's a scene, the entry if it's a journal entry, etc. If you want to open several, you can hold shift and the result window won't close as you click or hit enter multiple times uh, on multiple results to open them. You can also drag directly from the search result onto the scene to create a token or a journal pen. The coolest thing about quick insert though is that it's context aware. What that means is that if you go to the chat window and hit your search shortcut, it will place a reference to whatever you select in chat. The same thing will happen if you do it while you have a journal entry or a macro editor open. It even works if you use a roll table and it will automatically configure the entity type. Uh, we can see more examples of this if we jump over to an actor sheet and go to its inventory, features, or spellbook tab. Once there, you'll also see a new search icon in the far right of each section. Pressing this opens up a pre-filtered search box for items, spells, or features, and selecting a result will add it to your character sheet. Now that you've got an overview of what both can do, hopefully it'll be easy to make a decision as to which one fits your use case better. 
That's it. We covered seven modules and how to use them. Please look into them. And if the developer has a Patreon, a Ko-Fi, a PayPal support option, or a wishing well, it will be linked down below. And you should toss them a coin if you like their module so they'll keep creating and supporting all these great modules for Foundry. Now, I'm gonna take a quick minute to talk about this shirt. It is a admittedly dumb idea that I had and it's called my kind of party. It features that text across the uh, top of the shirt and it has a D20 disco ball making up the O and there are reflections of the D20 faces covering the background of the shirt and it has an elven wizard dancing with her feline familiar. Uh, it also has a warforged fighter doing the robot. It has a orc barbarian head banging and a halfling rogue doing its best Michael Jackson smooth criminal impression. Oh, and the cat is actually designed uh, after my cat, by the way, Secrets. Um, if you want to support the channel and aren't interested in the whole Patreon thing, then I hope you'll like this shirt and you can get it at the link down in the description. Uh, the printing and all that is being handled by Teespring and I picked the best quality shirt that they offered. Uh, for this one, it's a cotton one, or 100% cotton shirt from Next Level and it goes up to 3XL. There's also two options for women, a slouchy tee um, from Bella Canvas that goes up to 2XL and a simple tri-blend tee that comes from Next Level as well that goes up to 2X as well. Uh, for the slouchy tee, this sample is on a darker color than the live listing. Um, the live listing should be much more similar in color to this shirt uh, that I'm wearing, uh, just because the text on the dark shirt is a little harder to read. Um, but uh, all of them are priced the same at $20 with a few extra bucks for shipping. And uh, the shirt I'm wearing now is a medium and has already been run through the wash and it looks like the art held up uh, perfectly. So it seems to be pretty good. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I'm a terrible artist. So I sought one out and I found Peter Gargano on Reddit and commissioned this art. Uh, they were extremely easy to work with and I think they've got a great style. I liked it so much that my wife and I actually commissioned another piece of her character and the rest of her group from uh, the game that I run. I'm going to have links to their website, Instagram, and Twitter down below, and I would totally recommend checking them out and getting some art done of your group if you're into this style. Thank you all so much for continuing to watch these videos, sending me messages, comments, and smoke signals. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I look forward to doing more of them, uh, and I'll see you all in the next one.